So let's talk about the distance measures. And remember, the reason we're talking about these is these are distances between clusters, not between individual data points. So this is where it gets interesting and, and creative, right? The simplest one, that's the one that we had on the last slide, is the single link, right? Single link says that if I have, so uh, in this picture, I have three clusters, right? I have a red cluster, the yellow cluster, and the blue cluster, right? It just happens to be a very small blue cluster, right? If I'm measuring the distance between red and yellow in single link clustering, the way I do that is I look for two points such that one point is in red, another point is in yellow, and they're cl as close to each other as they can be. So I look for two closest points where one point is in one cluster, another point is in another cluster. So the way to, code it, to encode it is you're looking for a minimum, right? You're doing a min over all the points in cluster 1 and all the points in cluster 2 of the distance between x1 and x2. Right. So uh, try to get this. For some strange reason, this is, this is the part that seems to be the most confusing about hierarchical clustering. That's, that's the part that most students, for some reason, don't get. Um, so, uh, so that single link, and that's really, really simple. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple uh, idea. It makes sense. Uh, it's a nice strategy, and in many domains, it works really, really well. But one thing that you'll realize is uh, this will produce very long chains. Right. So, uh, because what what you're basically doing is you're you're connecting a point to a nearby point, uh, and eventually you will put two points that are pretty far away from each other into the same cluster. Right. So if I had if I had I had a bunch of points right, like that, right, and then and then, and then maybe I had a bunch of points around here. Uh, what single link will do is first it will put all of these guys together. So this point and this point will end up in the same cluster before it starts connecting them to the points that were around there. Right? Whether that's desirable or not depends on the domain that you're working with. For some domains, this is reasonable. For others, you would really want to connect this into a cluster before connecting any of those guys. <coughs> <coughs> But that's what single link does. It's going to produce uh, long chains of uh, elements. Uh, complete link is the opposite of that. So what complete link tries to do is it tries to produce clusters that are kind of spherical. Uh, what does it mean? It means that it wants all the points in the cluster to be reasonably close to each other. Right? Single link just wants one point in the cluster to be close to the point. Complete link wants all the points to be nearby within a certain uh, threshold. So that's, that's, that's why it's spherical. How is it defined? It's defined as the opposite. Here we have the min, now we have the max. So how are we going to do this? When we're measuring the distance between the red cluster and the yellow cluster, we're going to look at the pair of points such that one point is in the red, another point is in the yellow, and the distance is the biggest. And that is going to be our measure of distance between the red cluster and the yellow cluster. Okay? Now, what that doesn't mean is it doesn't mean that I'm going to merge red and yellow. This is my measure of distance. And then once I define this distance, I'm going to have a distance between red and yellow, a distance between red and blue, a distance between yellow and blue, and I'm, go and I'm still going to pick the minimum of those distances. Does that make sense? Right. So the distance is now the max, but once I compute the distances, I'm still looking for the minimum. I'm still looking for two closest clusters. Right. So single link. In this situation, you have three clusters, red, yellow, and blue. Single link would merge red and yellow before merging in the blue. Why? Because the distance between the red and yellow is smaller than the distance between red and blue. Right? So single link would actually do that. It would merge those two clusters. Complete link would not. Why? Because the distance between red and yellow is the distance between that point and that point. They are the most far away points. Right? That is a big distance. The distance between red and blue would be the distance between that and that. The distance between red and yellow would be the distance between that and probably that point, because they are the farthest away, as far as I can tell. Right? So complete link, which clusters would it merge? Uh, 
Sorry, did you say what? Dragon Bull. Dragon Bull. Uh, well, I can't. So let me see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. But the point is, it would definitely not merge red and yellow at this point, right? It would either merge red and blue or uh, yellow and blue. Yeah, it's really funny. So from this from this viewpoint, it actually looks like yellow is a lot closer to blue. But when I look at it on the screen, it's about the same. <laughs> it's eyes playing tricks on me. Um, <clears throat> so right. Make sure that you get this. Single link would merge red and yellow. Complete link would not merge red and yellow in this, uh, in this case. So those are two opposites, right? One of them looks for chains. Another one looks for these spherical units, the complete link. Uh, and of course, you can have anything and everything in between. So average link, that looks at the pairwise average of all the distances between the elements in the cluster. Right? So <clears throat> for uh, for all elements in cluster 1, for all elements in cluster 2, I'm going to add up their distances, right? So between this and this, this and that, all of them, right? And then divide by the total number of pairs. Uh, so that's average link, that's kind of, um, it's, uh, it, it, it sort of does middle ground between um, single link and uh, complete link. It's less affected by outliers, doesn't really have many, uh, many other good properties. <clears throat> uh, you can do centroids. Right? So uh, the way you would do centroids is you have one cluster, you have another cluster, construct a centroid representation of the red and the yellow, right? So that's just that, just the mean. Uh, and then look at the, the distance between the clusters becomes the distance between uh, the centroids. <clears throat> so it's nice and it kind of, it kind of makes sense uh, intuitively. Um, so uh, here's another method uh, which has some nice theoretical properties. It's called Ward's method. And uh, this one is using the same objective function that k-means used. Remember the objective function in k-means, you're looking at the total variance around the centroids. So for each centroid, you look at all the points that were assigned to that centroid and look at the deviation, the squared deviation of points from their centroid. So that's what this one is doing. right? So what it's looking for is it's saying, uh, before I do the merge, I have the red cluster and the yellow cluster. Each cluster has a centroid, and I have certain deviation from the centroid to the points in the cluster. And the total deviation is just the sum of the deviations here and here. Now, suppose I merge red and yellow. If I did that, I would end up with one cluster. That one cluster would have one centroid, and then I would have a deviation between that centroid and every point in that new cluster. So that's another number. And what Ward's method looks at is it looks at how much the total deviation will change between this and this. Is it going to go up or down? Up. It always has to go up, right? Anytime you merge things, points are going to end up further away from the centroid. It's never going to happen the other way. So this is going to always be bigger than the sum uh, at the bottom. But the question is how much bigger. So you pick the pair of clusters that results in the smallest increase of the variance. So, uh, so you, you pick the smallest, and that's the pair that you merge, and you advance to the next uh, iteration. <clears throat> All right. Good deal. So these are all the all, all, all the different measures, and there's a couple of others, but these are uh, these are the dominant uh, these are the dominant ones, and they will produce very different results. If you have a set of data points and you run different uh, um, and you run uh, uh, hierarchical clustering with different uh, intra-cluster distances, uh, you'll end up with very very different results. Um, okay. Now. Um, it turns out that there is actually a nice algorithm called the Lance Williams algorithm, which allows you to implement all of these and and, and a few more using one uh, using one algorithm. So we're going to look at this algorithm, and we're going to start by looking at it uh, from a single link perspective, right? So our distance is just the distance between individual points. That's the simplest case, and then we're going to look at a couple of other examples, right? So how does it work? Uh, you start with a distance matrix D i j where for each instance xi and xj, you have a distance between them, defined in whatever way. right? So your distance can be anything you want. Uh, by the way, I guess um, uh, while we're on this point, uh, different ways to combine allow you to use different distance metrics. So if you used Euclidean for a Euclidean distance, uh, you could use any of these methods. 
Uh, but Euclidean assumes that your data, that your attributes are numeric, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes you work with data for which Euclidean distance doesn't make sense. Uh, so, for example, if you have categorical attributes, you wouldn't use Euclidean uh, distance between them. Uh, single link and complete link and average link, these three algorithms can be used with whatever attributes you have, as long as you can compute the distance. Right? And this could be edit distance, uh, hamming distance, anything you want. Uh, these algorithms can work with it. Uh, centroids and words method presume that you have numeric attributes because you're basically uh, you're going to be computing centroids. You're going to be computing means, and you can't compute you can't compute a mean of categorical data. It doesn't make sense.